You can't go in the restaurant and jump up on a table and start proclaiming about abortion. They will throw you out. But if you go into the restaurant and you sit down at a table and then you pull out one of these modern communication devices, this thing called a cell phone. Now, you don't have to turn it on. Just leave it off. But put it up to your ear and start talking and start talking about abortion and how horrible it is and how they're committing abortions over at Nova Women's Health Building on Eden. Just do that. Not only will they not throw you out, people will lean in to listen to what you're talking about. They want to hear what's going on. That's getting out the message. That's being clever, if you will, wise as serpents. That's our task, to proclaim God's word in a community that doesn't want to hear it. We need to take that message. People say to me, well, Jim, you're used to speaking. You get in front of, of people and you speak, and that's okay for you. But I'm afraid of what to say. I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. When I'm out in front of an abortion facility like this, and a woman is on her way in to kill a baby, I'm afraid that I may say the wrong thing. And I tell you, when you read Matthew chapter 10, Christ says, when you're called upon to speak, do not worry what you're going to say, for it will not be you, but the Spirit of the Lord speaking through you. And you have to believe that. Now, there's a secret on that because you can't live a sinful life and then expect the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord to speak through you. You have to establish a prayer life. You have to communicate with God. You have to communicate with the Holy Spirit. And then when the time comes, he will give you the words to say. And you'll say what should be said. It will happen and you will see it happen. And so we go out and we proclaim God's message. Whatever thing, environment we're in, whatever opportunity we have, we speak to our friends. We speak to strangers that we may meet who bring up the topic. And toughest of all, we speak to our families, to our brothers and our sisters and our cousins and our parents in some cases. And we proclaim the truth of God, because that's what you do. And in Matthew 10, Christ has a lot to tell you about this fight. He tells you it's not going to be easy. And I ask you, when you read Matthew 10 tonight, to think of the pro-life fight, because you will be amazed at how clear it is that this chapter was written for this fight. He talks about parents handing over their children to death. And he talks about children handing over their parents to death. Matthew 10 is about the pro-life fight and about spreading God's word. And he tells you there's going to be lots of crosses that you're going to have to carry. They're going to call you names. They're going to say you're religious fanatics. You know, the first time that I ever picketed Planned Parenthood, and that was back in 1985, we were out in the street in front of Planned Parenthood protesting the fact that they were killing babies. And the news reporters came and they went inside and they came back out and they said, Planned Parenthood says you're a bunch of religious fanatics. What do you have to say about that? And we thought a minute and we said, thank you. Because if defending the lives of innocent human beings makes us religious fanatics, we plead guilty. And Christ says that they're going to call you these names. He says, in fact, in Matthew 10, they called the master of the house Beelzebub. How much more those of his household? But he says, if you fight your way through that, if you put all of those 
naysayers aside, if you disregard everything and you carry his word forward, you will, in fact, achieve your goal. He says, those who persist to the end will win. And so we know what the message is. The message is to keep proclaiming God's word. And finally, we'll close on the promise of Matthew 10. In Matthew 10, Christ says, He who proclaims me before man, I will proclaim him before my Father in heaven. And he also says, He who disowns me before man, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Christ says that if you're willing to continue this fight, now you're doing this for 40 days. But I have some bad news for you. This doesn't end in 40 days. God has called you here, but he's not going to, when you're done with your 40 days, he's not going to say, okay, you're done now. You don't have to do anymore. Now he's going to say, see how easy that was? Let's do some more. Let's get more involved in this fight because you know what? On the 41st day, there's going to be babies killed over there. And on the 42nd day and on the 43rd day, and we can't give up just because we've counted to 40. We have to come back and we have to be here always. Anytime that they're killing a baby, there ought to be a pro-lifer out here, if nothing else, remembering that baby in prayer and remembering that baby's mother and the doctor who is killing that baby, the staff of the facility, because God can change their hearts and he can change their minds. Back in 1979, when I got involved in the pro-life movement, I said, oh, we'll do this for four or five years and then this will all be over. Well, it's 2010 now and we're still here. But this is where God wants us to be. And if in your life, if you're where God wants you to be, there's no place else to be. So I invite you all to renew your dedication as you have. I mean, you're here. I'm speaking to the dedicated. I'm speaking to those who care. And I say thank you from the heart of the pro-life movement, from people everywhere say thank you for being here so that these babies don't die alone. And when you go home tonight and you read Matthew 10, I hope you are uplifted by Matthew 10, that you'll know how to go about this fight and you'll know what awaits at the end. Because Christ says if you proclaim his word, he will proclaim you before his father. That means when you die and you're facing his father and his father says, what were you doing when they were killing my children? Christ will come over and say, they were in front of the killing chambers praying. That's where you belong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. And he's absolutely right, folks. We can't just end at the end of 40 days. Uh, and I know you all understand that. Thank you.